Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to part two of our interview with Anne Hamilton Bryn, the founder of The Family. And of course, we still have the wonderful Michelle Gray, uh, medium extraordinaire. And we have Eric, my son, who has brought in is helping, you know, with some of the questions. Uh, all right, so we will go on. If if, if you did, I'm not going to read her little mini bio, okay, guys? So you need to go to part one and listen to that so you understand, you know, more about this woman and the reason why we're asking certain questions. Mm -hmm. All right. And thank you for coming back. You know, you have a voice and you need to be heard. I understand. Is there anything that is still not known about the cult known as the family? Good question. I love my peeps. Yes. Very good questions. Um, what she's saying is, uh, again, she says, thank you. And thank you for giving me opportunity to have a voice. Um, she says that despite, mm, well, and she's, she is saying that although there is much truth to what has been reported, um, we did experience love. Um, she's saying, although the circumstances around it as humans, as being in the physical world, she's saying are, are not good. She's talking about yeah. the pain, mm -hmm. but she's saying that there were different facets of love that were explored. And, and what she says, and she's saying this from the spirit, not from her in the physical. Second. And what she's saying is she says, um, the connections within them, the children, the children, the connections with each other, um, the trust with each other. And she's saying that uh, seeing things from the spirit realm, she can see how there was benefit to their experience of love. And she said that she loved in the way that she thought it was love. It's yeah. like she, she loved and she said that this life was about service for her and that she truly believed that that's what she was providing yeah. because she felt like, and she is saying more of the adults, that they were experiencing something good in their life. And that's what she was looking at, not looking at what was happening around it to create those feelings of good for them. No. So <clears throat> I don't understand uh, entirely i mean there was a physical abuse emotional abuse how how does that represent love is it because i need to do this for you because it's for your own good because i love you is that sort of thing yes and she wow. she says that there was um, a very twisted idea in her mind that uh discipline was absolutely necessary to the degree of oh that's not a good thing she says um oh that's hard to say um beating the bad out of them oh yeah okay so yeah yeah all right that's there were rumors that julian assange the founder of wikileaks grew up in the family assange admitted that a man who was his mother's boyfriend in the late 1970s had been a member of the cult the man had been a senator uh, presence who sought to have a certain psychological power over his family. Assange said, and, and they eventually went on the, the run from him, this guy. Um, but he, he said he never met Hamilton Brin or had any direct contact with the group as a whole. So is it true that Assange never met you? Did you want Julian Assange to be admitted to your cult? I mean, talk, talk to me about that sinister man. And um so, okay, so what she's saying is that this was a, a man that was trying to bring his mother, oh. uh, Julian's mother, mm -hmm. into the cult. Oh. It was like trying to initiate them in, but this was him. Like, it wasn't something that she was doing. Okay. It was him. She's isolating him as the... Like this was his choice, what he wanted, because okay. she's not showing any connection with okay. Julian Assange. Um, what purpose do cults serve? And Eric, if you want to also, if you need to chime in, please feel free to. 
Hmm. Eric says that um, a lot of them, uh, and hmm. and really a cult is the exploration of your intuition, um, being able to follow your intuition above the order or the uh, direction of someone else outside of you. Mm. He says it's it's always about what you're governed by. And so a lot of these cults, Eric is saying, um, many that are involved in them are having a soul lesson that many of them do feel something within them that is wrong. Oh. He says, even though, even though he says they're, it's the mind, like they're being convinced through the mind, but their gut, their heart is telling them different. And okay. there are some that do escape. There are some mm. that do leave if they can. So Eric says it. it's, uh, he's showing me how there's many different ways that we can learn this, but this is a very intense lesson about the souls, about the intuition and the connection to your higher yeah, self. If something doesn't feel right. You need to pick that up. If somebody's trying to get you into the, yeah. like, well, or also, the whole rationale that I'm broken and this cult can fix me. Um, yes. So yes. Why, why do several cult leaders make their followers believe that they are the second coming of Christ? What is that? Is that negative entities influencing or is that just, why is that a popular thing? Um, Eric says, because uh, a lot of them have a, um, they're very charged up through the ego and so they use like a title. It's all about title. So they may feel that or um, like what she was saying earlier about that Christ consciousness energy yeah. being connected to that. He's saying that there's, there is a spiritual connection that is there and that has um, it's not fully developed. It's like they go through the ego, they go through the mm -hmm. mind. So it only becomes so developed. Yeah. And so he says it ends up becoming more of a, a grooming, like a okay. getting power, feeling mm -hmm. power. And because uh, Eric says, as we know, power is developed through the self, from the self, not from other people. Right. He says getting it from other people is temporary and ends up being harmful yeah. when we, so he says, that's why um, these cults or the cult leaders they're cycling through the mind and the ego and that's why it often becomes so disastrous mm -hmm. in the end yeah so yeah it seems like uh there's always a promise that oh you can get closer to the leader you can go up to the ranks you can yes. become the warden of the prison whatever i mean yeah yeah, yeah. what are the uh many lessons your followers were to learn of course, we talked about a lot of them, but yeah. Um, well, uh, she she's saying that um, there were lessons of compassion, and she says, uh, compassion for each other because there was a loyalty. Yeah. Um, she also says service because she keeps saying, "Remember, it's not we're not judging, we're not judging from the soul." Right. But it is still service when the the belief is there. The belief is of service. Yes. So she says that there was lessons of service, but she says there was a lot of soul growth yeah. mm. uh, for each of them, including the ones that are in spirit, because she says it's a lot of effort of what they're giving back. Yeah. And she also says those that are still in physical form are also giving back. It's okay. like um, from what they've been through, there is an expansion for what they're giving despite their hardships. Yeah. And I, I suppose, of course, listening to your intuition, trusting your own gut, but also yes. um, self-love. It, it seems like a, it seems like the, the those who are tricked into uh, or get trapped into a cult, uh, they have a great deal of self-loathing. I can't imagine how anybody who truly loves themselves would fall for it. Well, Are and er Eric just says, mom, that's right. Because he says, that's why learning to understand yourself and truly loving yourself. When you do that, you have clarity yeah. and clarity and feeling and you, you won't 
be brought into those things because you know it's not for you. You know yeah. it's not right. No boon swoggling here. That's right. And and he's saying that there is a um is a vulnerability. It, it's mm -hmm. like they go after the vulnerabilities. Taking okay. somebody from a broken home, a broken yeah. marriage, uh, and that means uh, where where they're broken down, grief, lack of self worth. Yeah. yeah, that's typical. All right, so we just have a, a number of questions that I hope we can get through quickly. If you had the chance to change one thing, Anne, in, your, in this previous life, what would that be, and why? She says it would have been um, the the development of the own love within herself because it would have changed the direction yeah. of what she was there to possibly do the because she says it it didn't have to go this way yeah it could have gone another way like me so, i mean my, my parents were awful beating and all that yes. stuff i could have gone on to beat my own children but didn't it made me do the absolute opposite so you had that choice too Yes. And she says, that's exactly what she's talking about. She yeah. says, thank you for saying that because <laughs> she says that is precisely what I'm talking about is that we do have a choice in what part of us we would like to honor and what decisions we do with what has happened to us. Yeah. Breaking and those energetic said, patterns. Yes. They're difficult, yes. but doable. Yes, they are doable. And she says, you are a prime example of that for the world. Oh, um, I try. <laughs> All right. In this life experience, what was the lesson that you believe helped your soul grow the most? Okay, come here. Come here, Bella. Yeah. Scratching at the chair. Sorry. Gosh, okay. Um Well, she's saying what helped her soul grow the most. She actually is saying the end of her life. Um, she says, uh, searching so long for control to have control on my life to then lose control oh, at the yeah. end of her life and ending up in prison all that. Yeah. Um, she was in a hospital or, a um, psych is some she's not um she's all over the place in her head so she's and she's showing me what looks like a hospital it looks like okay. a hospital bed so she's in some kind of a um like a ward or a okay something like that but she's showing me the losing control mm. like that 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 was um despite the many other lessons she had experienced she's saying um finding love and doing everything I could to control the circumstances to feel love when it was always here all along with inside me. And she ended her life with having no control over her circumstances. Oh boy. Now that you've crossed over, do you think differently about the family? I mean, did your belief change once you transitioned to the other side? Yes. Um, now she does say that um, she started to cross over long before her body did. Okay. Um, yeah, they also want to know a little bit more about a description of your crossing over. But yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, what she's showing me is like, um, does she have Alzheimer's? Do you know? Because I know. A, a lot of times when I channel somebody who's had Alzheimer's, they'll show me one foot in the physical world and one foot in the spirit world. That's what she's okay. showing me. So it's like the going back and forth. So oh, like yeah. um, integrating herself into spirit. Uh, so she says that her, her crossing over, she actually shows it as being very bright, like walking into a lot of bright light. And she says that she was welcomed in. But she said that it, it was a slow unveiling of her physical self, like her um, belief system. She says it was like a um, she, she's showing like taking off a coat and taking off another coat and taking off yeah. another coat. It was, so it didn't all happen like, boom, I've got this awareness of how oh, it yeah. is and what I've done wrong okay. or oh, what I've done right. It tough. was more. 
it was like a um because she an says, onion. yes and she says that her belief system and eric is just saying to remember a belief system that a soul has or human being has their crossing is often going to have a tone of that belief system mm. that they're going into until they start to realize different or experience different. And he says, and each one is so very different, but yeah. with her, her belief system was in a place of I've done no wrong. Yeah. Like she, she wasn't really looking at it that way, even though parts of her knew that there were things there that she doesn't want to admit. Yeah. So that she says it was like a, um, she shows herself after all the taking everything off. She's literally in a bathing suit and doing this, like oh. covering herself up. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want you to see this. Yeah. So she says there was counseling. Yeah. There was counseling for I me. There was. She died. You died when you were 98 years old in an old age home. So maybe that was the, at least one of the potential for you being in a, in a hospital with no control. I mean, lost control. Yeah. There was some, something with her mind. Okay. Like her mind was, well, her mind was not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you see yourself now as opposed to while you're on earth? Uh, she says she sees herself as a student. Okay. Yeah. She says uh, being on earth, she saw herself more in the position of a leader. Mm -hmm. um, but she sees herself a teacher, as a student. Maybe. You probably yes. saw yourself as a teacher. Yes. 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 Um, she says that she humbly accepts being a student. And um, she says that she is very excited for her next opportunity to come to earth because she has learned so much from this lifetime. Okay. Yeah. That's another question. Are you going to reincarnate? If so, where and when and who? Maybe that has not been decided yet, but tell us what you do now. She's actually showing me um, like that it is, it's, it's already actually in the process. Oh. Um, she's showing me mail that okay. it's a mail that she'll be coming back to. And it's England overseas, England area okay. is where she's going to be going into. Um, she's showing uh, circumstances that are somewhat similar um, but she's showing a father, a father that has, uh, some mental illness, not a mother, a father, and she's male coming into, coming into life. So, so her she's father, not, it's going to, she's going to come as a male with a mentally ill father. Yes. Okay. And what do you plan to do? Form a cult or something like that? Or do anything nefarious again? Or are you going to no. try to do the she, opposite? She says that her intention in this lifetime is to um, be guided by her soul, by her higher self, okay. and to be able to, again, she's saying that there is a similar energy, like it's that, that family. And she says it goes back into Celtic. Mm. So, um, like she's showing me uh, like secret society. Oh, like wow. A secret society. So that's some of this energy that she's working with. And so she's saying um, like it's ev evolution of my soul. So in this lifetime, her attempt is of service, but she says this time from the heart. Oh, instead of the ego. All right. So yeah, let's talk about a past life that most affected your life as Anne Hamilton Brin. And she's showing um, a lot of hooded, um, I can't tell if they're men or women, but they're all wearing cloaks with little candles lit and they're walking around what looks like, actually looks like Stonehenge. Oh, like okay. Like that type of, like, yeah. big, they're outside because um, she's saying ceremony. Um, England or somewhere else? Uh, yes, that area of the world. Okay. Like England, Scotland, over Scotland, in that area yeah. feels very home for her. Um, like she's had more than one lifetime in that area. And what she's saying is that she has, uh, she's saying like Druid, 
Um, oh. and, and being in, uh, she says a group, uh, being in a group, bringing in energy, bringing in uh, like spirit. And now she does say that she was involved in, um, and I don't know what they are. They have like, um, the cloaks look burgundy, like a dark red okay. burgundy. And I can almost see like a little, um, design on okay. the cords. And what she's saying is, uh, we brought in darkness. Like we, but it was like, uh, praying to darkness. Okay. It wasn't like, a. um, it's darkness, like, we're praying. Are you, are you speaking about evil? That kind of thing? She says, like, we brought in, like, uh, like to help us, but it oh, well. was, like, praying to the wrong. Yeah. Like, we're the praying, wrong. praying to something dark. But, yeah. like, um, and they knew that, though. Like, they knew. They knew they yeah. were conjuring something. Mm. Like, she's not saying we did it without knowing. Like, but we were you just we one of the doing. the the regular people or were you a leader in that group or she, she wasn't a leader. She okay. says, um, she was an aspiring leader. Uh, she was a follower. She was part of this group. Um, what she shows me is uh, a lot of, mm, a lot of human sacrifice and mm. just not even with, with babies and stuff. Not very, oh, no. not very pleasant stuff. Did you ever have any maternal feelings for any of the children in the family? In the family? I mean, real maternal feelings? I mean, looking back. She says that um, in the way that she had always wanted to be loved, she was not able to give that yeah. to the children. Uh, so she says... If it were true maternal feelings, um, I, I would have wanted to, it's like wanting to be with them, wanting to nurture them. Mm. And she's showing that that was very challenging. It was oh, challenging you don't want to be around them too much, the kids? When they, uh, sh well, she says that she had very high expectations. Of oh, them. yeah. Okay. Any final messages? Well, she would like everyone to, uh, yes, thank you. Thank you for You're listening so to me. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, she would also like to share with everyone that, you know, um, she says, I made many mistakes in this life. That's true. Mm -hmm. But she says, uh, above all, one of the most important lessons that I have learned and what I see through other people is the power of love and seeing that love is truly more powerful than any material thing we could ever acquire. It is more powerful than, uh, she says, a million eyes on you. And she's showing like a movie star. Oh, like, yeah. Love is truly transforming. Mm -hmm. She says it is healing. She says it can uh, change a heart from black to pink is what she's yeah. saying. And so she says, do not discount the power of love. And if I could leave anything with any of you is that message today to take into each of your hearts. She thanks each and every one of you for listening to her today. Well, thank you for imparting such, such wisdom and uh, being brave enough to do it. Eric, do you want to ask any questions? Or Michelle, do you want to ask any questions before we close? Uh, yes. Um, I was just, just popped in my head when she was showing me with the, the cloaks and everything. Um, was she in the Spanish Inquisition? Because I was kept getting feelings of that. And she's saying no, that okay. she was not. But she says that she has been hung uh, for witchcraft. There's oh, a lifetime of wow. that as well. Um, Eric, is there anything else you'd like to say? <laughs> he just says, uh, I just would like my mom to know how much I love her oh, and to let her know that when we're done here, I'm going to be crawling up on her knee and giving her a great big hug. <laughs> oh, I'm ready for it. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening. Again, check out Michelle Gray in the description box. I'll just say it's thehealingh-art.com. <laughs> And uh, she does a lot more than just channeling. So just check her out. And uh, yeah, 
subscribe to the channel, please. And also subscribe to the Atlanta Scalar YouTube channel as well. All right. I love you all. Love you. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.